Okay, first a little bit of admin information. So uh, there were some student questions about what is covered in the book and what is covered in the lectures. So I have now created a file describing which parts of the lectures are connected to which parts of the book. So um, the file is in the Git repo and it has uh, the headings of the sections of the chapters and then a list of uh, lecture link so this is lecture one the le lecture week one lecture one part one this is uh well lecture week one lecture two part four and so on and these link to the the github or no the the youtube and then there are some indices to how many minutes and seconds in something starts and then there are sort of a column listing which subsection or section of the book is uh, covered in that part. And it's worth noting that I do not guarantee to cover everything in the lectures that is included in the course. So for example, notice here, it says included in the course 1.3 notation and abstract syntax or sequences, it's included in the course, but was not presented in the lecture during week one. Uh, there is also one other thing to note. Um, I have here some lectures which were not at the scheduled slots. They are uploaded on uh, YouTube, but they were not uh, at the usual scheduled slots. I call these extra lectures on Haskell. And they are, are very recommended for those who are not strong in Haskell, but it's also recommended for the rest of you. It defines a few things and does things in a way that I think is uh, useful to know how I think about them. You're going to see some related code uh, appearing today, which has to do with logic. Okay, <clears throat> the, the short version of it is study week N, where now is study week two, is book chapter N. This is book chapter two this week then. Okay, a short comment about assignment one. So uh, assignment one, whoa. Very strange. Okay, it probably linked to last year's assignment. So assignment one um, is closely related to what's talked about this week. Uh, they are it, it's done in groups of three, and uh, there are there is a deadline for handing it in um, here, first uh, of February, due first of February. Um, you should do it in groups of three, and almost everybody has already signed up in groups. Uh, if you haven't, please do so. And then on Monday, uh, so not this Monday coming because that's before the deadline, but Monday in 13 days, there are presentation slots. So each group will have a 15 minutes to show that they've actually understood and handed in the code that they wrote and not something copied from somebody else. Question. Um, sorry, I didn't really hear. Which video should you watch if you weren't very familiar with Haskell? Uh, so I would say those which are called extra lectures on Haskell. But do look through the, the list in the YouTube playlist. I mean, if I go to, to this video, that's one of them. OK, and this will now be advertising instead. But in the, in the playlist, um, Well, let's see. <laughs> this is a bit indirect, but in the playlist, ah, I, I'll just ignore it now. There are these um, extra lectures on Haskell, uh, which are useful for everyone, but perhaps especially useful for those who haven't got it. So here are extra lectures on Haskell part one, part two, part three. Um, the other question was, was uh, um, do we have different groups for each assignment? And the answer is yes. Uh, I mean, there are just two assignments, but yes, for the first assignment, there is one set of groups. And for the second assignment, there is another set of groups. Uh, are there any time slots for the assignments? So should you do them on your own time? There are uh, no time slots in the schedule for when you should be working on the assignments. Uh, 
they are, but they are, there are these 15 minutes slots when you should present that you actually solve them. But before the deadline, the first, there are no time slots. And also after the deadline that for, for the second assignment, there are no scheduled in the week time slots. You can work on it whenever you like, and you can ask questions whenever you like, and you will most likely get a quick answer if it's during the exercise sessions. How does the presentation work? Well, the presentations are not really, I, I put presentation in quotes here. It's not that you're expected to present something, but you should be able to answer questions about your own code. So uh, the TAs will have read the code and they will have questions about how such things work. So it will be a round robin asking all questions to the three of you in the group, making sure that you all three know and understand the code that you've handed in. And the book, you can book the presentations in the calendar on Canvas. I will send a mail about it in a day or two. It's not urgent, but um, they, they are already there in the, in the calendar. Uh, if you fail the first hand in, you can hand in again. So there are uh, possibility to do it uh, more. And what counts as a different group? Can two groups just exchange one of the members? Uh, so I will create the groups for the second assignment. So the first assignment, you choose whom to work with, and the second assignment, you don't. So this is part of the learning outcomes and part of the uh, sort of actually of the program as well, that you should be able to work with people you have not chosen yourself. So that's an extra challenge for lab two, that you should actually work with people you have not chosen. So they will not overlap with the groups of the first time. So changing one person will not be enough. It will be a change of two persons. Okay, and I already mentioned these extra lectures uh, online. They cover polymorphic functions, pair types, uh, some types, and uh, they are related to some of the uh, hand-ins from uh, exercises from last week. Okay, uh, now I should head over to the Jamboard um, and to get order in my uh, playlist, I will actually stop the recording and start it again.